you just made the best decision of your life. You decided to become an AI engineer, but where do you even start? Every beginner course throws a bunch of math right at you right from the get-go. Backpropagation, gradient descent, and words that make your brain explode. Another reason it feels so overwhelming is because being an AI engineer means that you're juggling four professions at the same time. Software developer, data scientist, mathematician, and of course, AI engineering itself. Each of these on its own takes years to learn. So no wonder why it's so hard to organize it in our head. So today, I'll try to bring order to the chaos. It will connect the big picture first, giving you enough background to start your journey confidently. And then I'll give you a list of resources so you know exactly what to learn next. By the end of this video, you will have a clear AI learning roadmap and a basic understanding of machine learning processes. And finally, this video is brought to you by Simply Learn, a global leader in digital skills training. We'll talk about them more shortly. So if you're ready, let's roll. Now, a quick note before we begin. All the checklists and graphics and assets from this video are publicly available for you to download. I'll show you where later in this video so you don't have to make any notes, just fully focus on watching. So let's start with something nobody talks about, but it's very important. The difference between AI and a regular program. A regular program is a set of instructions. In situation A, do this. In situation B, do that. And if situation C happens, but there's no instructions for it, we just get an error and our program dies. AI, on the other hand, is more like a child. We are trying to teach it a whole bunch of stuff, but we don't have full control over how well it learns. So for example, you can teach a class of 10 students the exact same material, but some will get an A plus and others will fail. And same goes for AI. We can train 10 different models on the same data, but they will all perform differently. So when it comes to AI, we are always dealing with situation C, where we don't know the answer ahead of time and our model is just trying to guess it. To fully understand it, we will dive a bit deeper. Now, the way we achieve AI or a decision-making machine is through a field of study called machine learning. And the way it works is instead of writing detailed instructions for something like spam detection, covering each and every scenario in our program, we just say, hey model, here's 10,000 spam emails and here's another 10,000 normal emails. Go ahead and figure out the difference on your own. This is the core idea of machine learning. Now, under this very big umbrella, we have different kinds of techniques to solve different kinds of problems. The most popular approach today is called deep learning. Why? Because almost all the modern AI tools like ChatGPT, Cloud, and Sora, and many, many more are built on deep learning algorithms. But what exactly does it mean? Well, an algorithm is a set of instructions, just like a cooking recipe. If you mix all the ingredients in the right order, then you will get a tasting meal. So with algorithms, you just follow the instructions properly and you will get the result. Deep learning, on the other hand, is a field of study inspired by the human brain. It mimics our process of thought with something called artificial neural networks. So if a human brain has billions of neurons and they all talk to each other with electrical impulses, then artificial neural networks have virtual neurons and they talk to each other with ones and zeros. An electric impulse means one and the absence of it means zero. But why do we call it deep? Neural networks are made of layers and they are stacked on top of each other. The first layer takes some kind of an input, let's say an image of a cat, and then each of the following layers will analyze it or transform it. For example, one layer will check for whiskers, another one will look for a tail, another one will look for pointy ears, and then the deepest layers in our network will usually combine all these features together. So if something has whiskers, 
tail and pointy ears, then there's a big chance that it's a cat. But if something only has a tail and none of the other features, then the chances are lower. For a detailed example, please check out my Neural Networks Simply Explained tutorial, especially if you find yourself a bit overwhelmed um, throughout this roadmap. Now, each neural network can switch between two modes, training and inference, where training means learning. You feed the network with tons of examples, just like when a student prepares for an exam and learns the material really, really well, while inference means predicting. The network takes everything it learned and applies it on data that it has never seen before, just like when a student takes an exam. But the only problem is that sometimes, instead of learning, the network just memorizes all the examples. It becomes a real expert on the learning material, but it fails when we show it something new, something like the exam material. To avoid it, we need to prepare our data really, really well. Now, if at this point you feel like it's a bit too much to handle on your own, then I highly recommend checking out the applied Generative AI specialization delivered by Simply Learn in partnership with Purdue University Online. It is a very comprehensive 16 weeks program that teaches you how to design, deploy, and fully master generative AI and agentic development. When you complete it, you get a program certificate from Purdue University Online and Simply Learn and you are eligible to become a Purdue alumni. You'll get more than 70 hours of live instructor-led training, seven industry projects for your portfolio, and the best part, you'll gain real, hands-on experience with tools like LangChain and Transformers in a fancy Microsoft Azure environment, like a pro. So apply right now through the link in the description, but hurry up, the registration is closing soon, and if you miss it, you'd have to wait for the next cohort date. So huge thanks to Simply Learn for partnering on this video. Now let's go back to the roadmap. To prepare our data, we usually split a data set into three parts. Training data, or the learning material of our model. We also have validation data, or the quiz material. We use it to test our model during training. And then finally, we have the testing data, or the final exam material. We use it to evaluate our model after the training is complete, where each of these subsets stores unique data. So if one sample is a training sample, then we are not allowed to use it for testing or for validation. Otherwise, you're just cheating. Now, for beginners, I highly recommend putting validation aside, at least at first. You can always get back to it after you understand the rest of the pipeline. It is a very important process, don't get me wrong, but initially it will only confuse you. Now, the content of our data is often a table that includes the following components. Samples or the rows in our table, features or the columns in our table, all except one, and then finally we have targets also known as labels or one special column where we store what we would like to predict. So for example, if we predict the housing prices in Vancouver, then our target column is the value of the house. But if we predict what animal is in this picture, then our target column is the animal name. Okay, but how do we decide what kind of data to predict? Well, it usually depends on the problem we're trying to solve. In machine learning, we are mostly dealing with three kinds of problems. We have classification problems, or choosing from a list of categories, like is this an image of a cat, of a dog, or of a goat? We also have regression problems, or choosing numbers, like what will be the price of my house next year? And finally, we have clustering problems, or grouping data based on some patterns within it, like we throw a bunch of flower images at our model during training, but we don't share their labels. So the model doesn't really know which flower is which, but it will sort them anyways based on their colors, shapes, or other features. But wait, why are we hiding information from our model? Aren't we supposed to teach it or something? Well, there are different approaches for training, and not all of them involve being transparent. 
Now, the most common approach is called supervised learning. It reveals both the features and the targets to our model. We don't just give it a photo of a cat, but we also point at it and we say that this is a cat. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, only reveals the features to our model. We don't give it the labels because we want our model to investigate the data on its own. Now, the most extreme approach is called reinforcement learning, where we fully rely on trial and error. In fact, the absence of data is what we need here. So for example, we drop our model in the middle of a video game and we don't even share the rules with it. We just want the model to figure out the entire world on its own. And if we give it enough time, the model will learn to play the game even better than us humans. This is what we call a simulation. But wait, do we just drop the same model that detects cats in the middle of a video game? And the answer is most definitely not. We have special kinds of neural networks for different use cases. For example, we have convolutional neural networks. We use them for image-based data, specifically computer vision tasks, such as face and object detection, or determining what kind of animal is this. If we want to generate new images or new videos, then we use diffusion models, such as mid-journey or stable diffusion. If we want to predict housing prices, then we use recurrent neural networks. But nowadays, the most popular architecture is called transformers. And this is the basis of modern AI. It includes large language models, such as ChatGPT and Grok, and it can both interpret existing data, like summarizing a document, or generate new data that didn't exist before, like writing an essay or a book report, or even creating a website. Now there's tons of other architectures, but these ones are a really good starting point. So great, now that we connected all the dots together, we can finally move on with specific steps and resources for your studies. The first thing you'll need on this journey is a basic understanding of Python. Luckily, I have a Python learning roadmap and a beginner's playlist. These can help you study, but some of it you'd have to research on your own. And the two Python libraries that you'll need to absolutely master are NumPy and Pandas. There are plenty of free Python courses out there and it doesn't matter which one you choose. Just pick one and go for it. Next, you'll need a deeper dive into data science beyond the NumPy and Pandas that you just learned, including working with JupyterLab, plotting graphs with Matplotlib or with Pandas, and all kinds of pre-processing techniques. Then you'll need a solid foundation of math, specifically probabilities, matrices, binary operation, and a bit of predicate logic. And at this stage, you can finally move on with machine learning itself. Now, the steps in this section and in the next one mostly depend on how you learn things. If you learn better through practice, then start with the coding pipelines. If you prefer understanding the big picture, then start with a the theory. So basically, you can reorder these categories and push one in front of the other. Once you are comfortable with what you've learned so far, you can officially move on with deep learning and advanced data science. At this stage, my AI simplified playlist will come really handy, and I recommend watching it in this specific order. But here's the important part. The best way to master all these components is by practicing. So my recommendation, every week, download a new data set. Sometimes it would be text, other times it would be tables or images or videos. And then with each type of data, build a complete pipeline from start to finish and deal with the challenges as they come up. Now, there are many terms and concepts that I've skipped in this video, but I've included them in the roadmap checklist. And even this, it's just the top of the iceberg when it comes to AI. So if you're wondering, how do we know when we are ready to apply for jobs in AI? I'd say test your skills in a Kaggle competition. If you can prove that you're more skilled than others, then the job will find you. If you can prove that you're just as skilled as others, then you can start applying. 
If you fail or barely get to the finish line, then go back to studying and wait for the next competition. So if you guys need more info on Kegel competitions and what it's all about, please leave me a comment below right now. Don't forget it. And I will cover it in an upcoming live stream. And finally, you can download the checklists and all the graphics from this video from my website, pythonsimplify.org. And the link is of course in the description. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with the world. And don't forget to leave it a huge thumbs up and all kinds of comments. Now, if you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you soon in an awesome tutorial. So good luck on your AI learning journey. And in the meanwhile, bye-bye.